New Chinese model DeepSeek R1 just took the entire AI industry by surprise. This model outperforms OpenAI's O1 preview on various reasoning heavy benchmarks and leverages the new scaling paradigm of test time compute. The craziest part about all of this, they show the model's full thought process in real time and plan to make it completely open source. Next, how well can you differentiate between AI generated and non AI generated art? Probably not as well as you think. In this video, we'll take a look at the recently finalized results from the AI art Turing test, as well as a ton of new AI generation tools from this week. Lastly, Figure AI gives us a status update on Figure 2, who is now an autonomous fleet. In just the last few months, they increased their speed by 400% and have a 7 times higher success rate. The rate at which these humanoid robots are improving is honestly just insane. So before we get into this new Chinese model called DeepSeek R1 Lite Preview, there was a clip from a recent Microsoft keynote where their CEO, Satya Nadella, addresses the wave of articles claiming AI progress is slowing down and scaling has hit a wall, published by many top AI news sources like The Information, Reuters, and Bloomberg. As you'll see in this clip, he refers to a new scaling paradigm that's currently emerging, which this DeepSeek model is actually based off. Take a look. Now, in fact, there's a lot of debate. In fact, just in the last multiple weeks, there's a lot of debate, or have we hit the wall with scaling laws? Is it going to continue? I mean, the thing to remember, at the end of the day, these are not physical laws. These are just empirical observations uh, that hold true, just like Moore's law did for a long period of time. And so therefore, it's actually good to have some skepticism, some debate, because that, I think, will motivate uh, quite frankly, more innovation on whether it's model architectures or whether it's data regimes or even systems architecture. So uh, it's a good thing to have. In that context, though, if anything, we are seeing the emergence of a new scaling law uh, with, with test time or inference time compute. In fact, OpenAI's O1 is a good example of it, and features like uh, the co-pilot Think Harder is built on O1. Uh, is all about using test time to solve even harder problems. As you can see, DeepSeek uses this new paradigm of test time compute scaling to achieve state-of-the-art performance on several benchmarks, such as the AIME. The longer they give this model to think, or the more thought tokens per problem, the higher its accuracy. This is exactly what OpenAI displayed with their new O1 model series. It's clear we're starting to hit a bit of a wall with scaling pre-training, but test time compute scaling has just begun. So we can expect the GPT series to slow down a bit, GPT-5, or whatever they end up calling it, probably won't be that big of a leap, and that goes for every other AI company who hasn't already moved on to this new paradigm of inference scaling. Now, just like how scaling up pre-training brought us from GPT-2 level systems all the way up to GPT-4.0, we can potentially expect similar leaps, if not even bigger, from O1 to O2 to O3 and so on. This is going to lead to AI models that are exceptionally advanced at reasoning, possibly even surpassing human level. We're already seeing insane scores like these on reasoning heavy benchmarks. DeepSeek R1 scores 52.5% on the AIME benchmark, a test compiling some of the hardest secondary level math questions. It also outperforms OpenAI on the math and code forces benchmark and pretty much matches its performance everywhere else. Benchmarks don't always tell the full story though, I highly recommend you try it out for yourself. From what I've been seeing so far on X and from doing some of my own personal tests, it truly seems like the real deal. Now moving on to some OpenAI news, OpenAI's live camera feature could be set for a release. In the latest advanced voice mode update, strings related to the live camera feature were spotted for the first time in the code. This feature was demoed by OpenAI nearly 6 months ago and it could finally actually be coming. It's essentially like being able to FaceTime with ChatGPT, unlocking a whole new world of use cases. Now, there's no set release date, and OpenAI hasn't said anything about it, so if we get any new information, I'll definitely be sure to let you guys know. OpenAI also recently released an updated version of GPT-4.0, focusing on its creative writing ability. It states here, the model's creative writing ability has leveled up. More natural, engaging, and tailored writing to improve relevance and readability. It's also better at working with uploaded files, providing deeper insights and more thorough responses. So, this came less than a week after Google released their Gemini Experimental 1114 model, which surpassed OpenAI briefly in the LM Arena leaderboards. If we take a look at the leaderboards right now, and by the way, if you're not familiar with the LM Arena, it was formerly known as the LM Sys Chatbot Arena, and it's basically a place where they pit AI models against each other, and random people blindly vote on them. So as we can see, OpenAI has retaken their lead over Gemini 1114 with their latest GPT-40 update on November 20th, but Google struck back. They dropped a new model only one day after OpenAI's that just slightly outperforming it. There's clearly a little bit of a war going on here, typically it's OpenAI that one-ups Google, but it looks like 
this time, Google got the win. Speaking of Google, they've really been shipping lately. Here's another new model they recently released called Learn LM 1.5 Pro Experimental. We get a little bit more information on it here directly from Google. It states, Learn LM is an experimental task-specific model that has been trained to align with learning science principles when following system instructions for teaching and learning use cases. For example, when giving the model a system instruction like you are an expert tutor. So this is essentially a model that's designed for educational tasks. As they mentioned, you can tell it things like you are an expert tutor or even more specific things like help me study for a high school biology test on ecosystems and it'll dynamically adapt its behavior accordingly. This is literally the future of learning. You can imagine that a model like this combined with other modalities like voice, vision, and possibly even agentic capabilities would be awfully similar to having your own personal tutor in any subject you want. This is a lot closer than people think. In other AI news, someone created an AI art Turing test and got 11,000 people online to attempt it. So this is basically a test to see if AI generated art is indistinguishable from human generated art to humans. They found that most people had a hard time identifying AI art. Since there were two choices, human or AI, blind chance would produce a score of 50% and perfect skill a score of 100%. The median score on the test was 60%, only a little above chance. The mean was 60.6%, participants said the task was harder than expected. Another takeaway from this test was that humans actually slightly preferred AI generated art. It states, I asked participants to pick their favorite picture of the 50. The two best liked pictures were both by AIs, as were 60% of the top 10. This was actually the most loved image in the entire competition and it's AI generated. Even many people who thought they hated AI art preferred it. It says here, the 1,278 people who said they utterly loathed AI art, score of 1 on a 1 to 5 Likert scale, still preferred AI paintings to humans when they didn't know which were which. The number 1 and number 2 paintings most often selected as their favorite were still AI, as were 50% of their top 10. So what did we learn? Alan Turing recommended that if 30% of humans couldn't tell an AI from a human, the AI could be considered to have passed the Turing test. By these standards, AI artists pass a test with room to spare. On average, 40% of humans mistook each AI picture for human. And humans keep insisting that AI art is hideous slop, but also, when you peel off the labels, many of them can't tell AI art from some of the greatest artists in history. So I want to hear what you guys think about all this. I know there's a lot of people who have very strong opinions about AI art, and I'm curious to know if this test has changed your opinion at all. Let me know in the comments. Now, there was a ton of news this week in the world of AI image and video generation. We got Black Forest Labs releasing Flux1 Tools, a suite of models designed to add control and steerability to their base text-to-image model Flux1. With Flux1 Fill, you get state-of-the-art in-painting and out-painting capabilities. In-painting allows you to edit your generation seamlessly without having to regenerate the whole image. And with out-painting, you can expand any image beyond its original borders. As you can see, it is able to do this better than any other model out there. Then we have Flux1 Canny slash Depth, two other state-of-the-art tools that give you more precise control over your generations. And finally, Flux1 Redux, yet another state-of-the-art tool that lets you turn real photos into AI generations. So some major upgrades here from Black Forest Labs, I think it's safe to say that Flux1 might be the best AI image generator out there right now. We also have LTX Studio introducing LTX Video, a new open source video model. What's special about this model is that it literally generates scenes in real time. It can generate 24 frames per second videos at 768 by 512 resolution, faster than it takes to watch them. It also just looks really good, and the scenes are not in slow motion like you often see from other models. The idea of an AI generated movie unfolding in real time as you watch it is no longer a distant possibility. Next, we have the launch of Promise, a pioneering studio built from the ground up to drive storytelling innovation in the era of generative AI. This is essentially an AI movie studio. It's backed by a ton of big investors like Andreessen Horowitz and even film producer Peter Chernin. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out with. These will be the first professionally produced fully AI generated movies and they have a chance here to really transform the entire movie industry. In other news, HeyGen is now available on iOS. It doesn't matter if you're creating content for TikTok, YouTube, or just something fun for your audience. Now you've got the power of the most advanced avatar and video translation tech literally in your pocket. So you get the idea, these AI avatars are getting scary good, and pretty much anyone can now create them. The last story before we move on to Figures Robots is the release of Suno V4. We're super excited to introduce V4, enabling you to make any song you can imagine with better audio, sharper lyrics, and more dynamic song structures. Some of the new features include remaster, allowing you to upgrade your tracks in V4 quality, lyrics, creative higher quality lyrics for your songwriting, and cover art, fresh designs to complement your music's vibe. This is another area where AI is slowly taking over, it's really only a matter of time before where we see these AI generated songs make their way to platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. Finally, Figure and BMW give us an update on their partnership. I'm just going to play you guys this whole clip because it's honestly pretty wild.
So yeah, these humanoid robots are getting a lot faster and more efficient, and they're only going to get even better and faster as I continue to deploy more of them. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. I wanted to also let you guys know that I've just created a Patreon where I'll be uploading weekly AI news recaps every Sunday on top of my regular uploads. These will be short and simple 2-5 to five minute videos where I'll cover every important story in the AI industry from that week, and I'll even be doing monthly recaps at the end of every month, as well as deep dives into significant research papers and exclusive model tests. So for anyone who's interested, the link will be in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you guys check it out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.